Rapids Waterslide. So it seems like water parks really have a tough time making it through their 30s, as the Wild Rapids Waterslide Park also found itself being shut down at just 34 years old. The park was a staple of central Alberta, but had to close its doors just last year as the cost of maintaining the old rides as well as keeping up with competition was just becoming too much. They were required to do several huge renovations to keep up with new health and safety codes, and in the end it was determined they just couldn't do it, so they had to become banned. Sadly, the park had no choice but to close its doors, so you can't go on any more rides from now on. Zoe, Mayor Killam and her friend love a good splash at the Wild Rapids Water Slide Park, but those good times will soon be coming to an end. This is the last season for the well-known Sylvan Lake attraction. It was shocked to hear that they, uh, they were closing. We've had pictures taken every year we come up of them sliding down and see how they've grown. The park has been around for more than 30 years, but the general manager says maintenance costs were unmanageable. The bottom line is that somebody has to absorb that cost of the ongoing. It's a very, very long, drawn-out pre-season maintenance to make the water park uh, safe and, and attractive to, to the sliders. So the only way to do that would be to increase the bottom, the bottom line, which is the ticket price. More than 20,000 people visit the park each season. The loss will cause ripple effects through the local economy, but the Chamber of Commerce isn't worried. Number 4. Schlitterbahn Even though some parks can apparently handle six different fatalities and just keep on going, for others one tragic death is enough to shut down a ride forever. Caleb Thomas Schwab died when riding the 168 foot tall Verux slide at Schlitterbahn Water Park in Kansas City. The ride was known as the tallest water slide in the world, but when he and two other women got into a raft, the woman got injured while Caleb ended up decapitated. Now this isn't exactly unexpected, given that the ride is German for insane. It also requires everyone to wear two seatbelts in order to survive the 17 story drop at speeds of 70 miles an hour. The park was also semi-famous for being light on regulation, and even lobbying to make sure it was responsible for its own private inspections. Despite running a park for 50 years that had no other accidents on that scale, the ride had to be taken down to ensure nothing like that ever happened again. Number 3. The Steamer Slide As you probably already know, Canada has a reputation for being a pretty laid back and fun place, but there are some things you really don't want to be relaxed about, including safety regulations. Calypso Water Park in Ottawa was charged with 6 safety violations in court after being accused of a Mammoth 20, and it was said that the park posed an immediate danger to its visitors thanks to staff who ran the park carelessly. The biggest fines had to do with the Steamer Water Slide though, as they noticed it causing a string of accidents. People kept getting flipped over, breaking everything from collarbones to vertebrae, with seven people receiving spinal injuries on the ride. Although the owner of the park made it clear that the issues with the ride had already been fixed and the level of staff training had increased dramatically, it was still ruled safer to close the ride off to the public and so it was shut down by the TSA. However, it was basically closed down after the whole park had already finished their season, so it's kinda hard to see how much of a difference it actually made. Number 2. Fort Rapids Okay, the only thing better than going to a water park is living next to a water park, and when you can't do that, staying at a hotel with a water park inside of it is probably the next best thing. Fort Rapids Water Park is located in Columbus, Ohio, and unfortunately just last February it was banned from being opened ever again due to so many different issues. According to NBC4 News, this includes bed bugs, cockroaches, air quality, improper food handling, repairs without permits, and numerous fire code violations. There were also reports of guests being sickened from the fumes in the water park, so uh, yeah, I'm glad I never visited this place.
Here's our honorable mention. During the 70s, water slides became very popular, and in Orlando, the infamous Wet n Wild water park was constructed. Millions of tourists would visit each year, and it became a no-brainer that the park was a huge success. Unfortunately though, as time goes on, things break, and safety codes change, making these older parks much less profitable and harder to maintain. That's basically why the owners of the park decided to literally tear the entire thing down and make way for a new water slide park called Volcano Bay. Now there are wet and wild parks all over the world, and after a bit of research, it turns out a large majority of them have actually been closing. I managed to find a really cool commercial from the 80s of the water park, so I'll go ahead and show one of these rides and as well the older commercial. Anyways, let me know in the comments below if you'd like to see one of these water slides in your town or city. Minutes from Winnipeg at Lockport is seven stories of wet and wild fun. Slide through the maze of twists and turns. Splash down into a sparkling heated pool. Make a day of it for the whole family. Bumper boats, miniature golf, the famous footlong hot dogs, cotton candy, and ice cold... Number 1. Action Park Action Park was kind of legendary for being a little on the extreme side, with countless cuts and bruises happening as a result of the badly maintained rides and less than attentive staff members. In fact, the place caused six different deaths and was still allowed to keep on running, even if one ride proved a little too dangerous for the park to justify keeping. The Cannonball Loop only lasted one summer before it was immediately shut down and was a creation of a Swiss designer who was only brought over on a week-long visa. Its 45 degree angle and 20 foot drop meant that essentially no one could or would ride it, and staff members had to be bribed to test it with real money. Most people who attempted it couldn't clear the loop or got horrible abrasions on their back from the sand and dirt that collected. Those who were too tall, too short, too fat, too thin, or wearing anything that could snag were all sent away, as the risk of things going wrong was just way too high. Craziest of all though, one of the crash test dummies sent out to test the ride came back missing limbs, which is the first sign that the ride should have been scrapped immediately. Let me know in the comments if you ride this thing for $1,000. I mean, I probably wouldn't, but I'd love to hear what you guys think.